Hi, today I'd like to introduce you to black walnut or Juglans nigra. Black walnut is arguably the most valuable hardwood tree species in eastern North America for the lumber that it produces. It produces a really dark colored, almost ebony colored wood um, in the heartwood. The sapwood's lighter in color, but the heartwood is absolutely beautiful. It makes fine furniture and cabinetry, and actually historically it's been used for gun stocks. To identify black walnut, you'll notice it has compound leaves that alternate on the twig. These compound leaves can be anywhere from about 12 inches in length up to about 24 inches in length, and they can have anywhere from about 10 or 12 leaflets up to about 24 leaflets. Notice I mentioned even numbers when I was talking about leaflets. Normally those numbers are odd, the reason for that is the terminal bud is usually missing on black walnut, and that's also a good ID characteristic to separate it from other compound leaf trees and even its cousin, the white walnut or butternut. These leaflets are opposite from one another, so they're somewhat paired normally, but again, the leaves alternate on the twig. If you crush these leaves, they've also got a, a really strong odor that's really unique for walnut. Another great identifying characteristic is a relatively large tan colored terminal bud that has a few bud scales and it's somewhat fuzzy. Um, it'll also have these rounded lateral or side buds just above where the leaf attaches. And if we're to remove one of the leaves, you're going to see a leaf scar. Again, the leaf scar is the mirror image of the base of the leaf and it has three distinct groupings of bundle scars and three lobes and it almost resembles that uh, the face of a monkey so that makes it a great ID characteristic a fun one to remember black walnut by again the face of a monkey um, twigs are pretty stout think about something that can have up to 24 inch leaves it's going to take a fairly stout twig to support those leaves and the fruit that we're going to talk about here in a little bit if you cut into the twig you're going to see these open chambered it's got what we call a chambered pith, which is unique to walnut and only a few other species. The black walnut pith is actually lighter in color. Its cousin, the butternut pith, is darker in color, but you'll see these big open uh, voids or chambers in the pith of the twig. The fruit of black walnut can be relatively large, more than two inches in diameter when it's in the husk. This husk is a lime green color and they're maturing right now. We're in about mid to late September. It's the 22nd of September today. You can see the squirrels are working these things pretty heavily. It's a lime green husk that completely encircles the nut. Uh, there are no splits or sutures in this husk like its cousins, the hickories, which have multiple sutures that split. Um, this husk just kind of disintegrates over time or like these, these are actually laying in my driveway and they've been run over by a car. And actually, believe it or not, that doesn't really hurt the nut that's inside. The nut that's inside is a very rough um, ridged nut. It's dark in color once the husk falls off almost black. And if you crack it open, it produces this wonderful nut that's great for human health. Um, it's, it's actually very heart healthy. Um, not many species of wildlife can actually benefit from walnut fruit because it's, it's not as so hard that it takes something like a squirrel with those big teeth or other rodents to be able to break through that nut to be able to get to the fruit that's inside, the, the meat that's inside. I've also heard that turkeys can actually eat the whole nut and grind it up with their gizzard and get the, get the nut from that as well, but it looks like it'd be hard to get that down the throat. Um, Another great ID characteristic is this bark. It's usually dark colored. It's somewhat interlacing, and if you were to break just a little bit of the bark off, you're going to see a chocolate brown uh, color just under the bark surface. Black walnut typically grows in floodplains, or, and it does quite well in anywhere where you've got a deep, well-drained soil, like a silt loam. And that's where you're going to get that big taproot development where this tree can actually produce or grow at its, at its best. Um, it likes or grows best in uh, fairly light conditions. It doesn't grow in total shade, but if it's growing with enough competition, it does a really nice job of pruning itself up and losing these lower limbs, making nice clear lumber um, 
down there. And again, we mentioned how valuable the lumber is of black walnut. Um, historically, the lumber of black walnut is higher priced per board foot than almost any species we can find out there. And if you're fortunate enough to grow walnut trees that produce veneer, the value can be very, very high. Again, this is black walnut, Juglans nigra. Um, and again, take the time to spend at least part of your day in the woods.